You're watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 11th of December. India's top court upholds abrogation of Article 370, says special status was temporary. Pakistan's former PM Nawaz Sharif wants better ties with India. And UN agency warns of Afghans dying in harsh winters if no proper shelter provided. And now for all the details. India's Supreme Court on Monday termed the special status of Jammu and Kashmir as temporary as it upheld the validity of the government decision to abrogate Article 370. The top court pronouncing the verdict said Article 370 was an interim arrangement due to war conditions in the state which was meant for integration and not disintegration. The state of Jammu and Kashmir had no sovereignty when it joined India, the apex court said. The top court in its verdict also directed authorities to conduct elections in the federally administered region by September 30th next year. Today, the Supreme Court has come to the Supreme Court. Today, I think that after 35 and 370, the rules are all the rules. The Supreme Court has said that the rules of the Supreme Court were right. 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 The rules of the जो उन्होंने यूनियन टेरिटरी को यूनियन टेरिटरी बना दिया जम्मू कश्मीर को वो फैसला भी ठीक है उसमें कोई कमी नहीं है रिएक्टिंग टू द जजमेंट प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी वेलकम द वर्डिक्ट एंड सेड द एपिक्स कोर्ट डिसीजन वाज नॉट जस्ट लीगल जजमेंट बट अ बीकन ऑफ होप एंड अ टेस्टमेंट टू द गवर्नमेंट्स रिजॉल्व टू बिल्ड अ स्ट्रांगर यूनाइटेड इंडिया Taking to X, Home Minister Amit Shah also praised the decision and said the verdict by the top court proves the government decision was constitutional. However, former Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Gulam Nabi Azad said he was disappointed by the verdict. It is unfortunate, but we have to, everybody has to accept the decision of the Supreme Court uh, with a heavy heart, with a heavy heart and unfortunately we didn't expect this decision. We were, uh, thinking that uh, the Supreme Court will consider the sentiments uh, of the people of Jammu Kashmir and also the uh, historical background under which Article 370 was incorporated in the constitution of the state and in the constitution of India, that will be taken into consideration. That was our hope, but unfortunately that has not happened. Moving on. On the eighth day of winter session of the Parliament, Home Minister Amit Shah on Monday introduced the Jammu and Kashmir Reservation Amendment Bill and Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Amendment Bill in Rajya Sabha. The bills have already been passed in Lok Sabha. The Act provides for reservation in jobs and admission in professional institutions to members of scheduled caste, scheduled tribes and other socially and educationally backward classes. The second week of Parliament began after witnessing some significant businesses in both the houses and ended with the expulsion of Maua Moitra after the ethics panel tabled its report probing unethical conduct by her in the cash for query case. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif has expressed his intention to normalize Pakistan's ties with its neighboring countries, particularly India, if voted to power in elections later to be held in February. The three-time Prime Minister called for improving ties with New Delhi, which were downgraded following the removal of Indian-held Kashmir's autonomous status in 2019. While speaking to ticket aspirants of his party, Nawaz recalled that during his government's tenures, two Indian Prime Ministers, Atal Bihari Vajpayee and Narendra Modi in 2015 had visited Pakistan just a few months before the Kargil war began. Nawaz Sharif also said that he was ousted by former military chief of Pakistan, Parvez Musharraf, for opposing the Kargil war. Pakistan's continuous attempts to infiltrate Indian territory with terrorists have been the reason for unfriendly relations. The UN Refugee Agency on Monday warned that Afghans who have recently migrated from Pakistan to Afghanistan could die in harsh winters if they don't get adequate shelter. Almost half a million Afghans have left Pakistan since early October when the Islamabad government announced it would arrest and deport them. The overwhelming majority of them are from neighboring Afghanistan, though Islamabad insists the policy doesn't target a specific nationality. The force returns are piling pressure on Afghanistan and aid agencies, which are providing the bulk of essential services like healthcare. 
Freezing temperatures are setting in and conditions at the border remain dire. Islamabad has not heeded calls from international bodies and refugee agencies to reconsider its deportation plans. Days after Pashtun Tahafuz movement leader Manzoor Pashtin was sent to police remand by an anti-terrorism court in Islamabad, PTM members have lambasted Pakistani military, accusing it of restraining their freedom of expression. Pashtin had been arrested in Balochistan after his security guards allegedly clashed with the police and opened fire, a charge PTM has denied. A member of the organization, Fazal ur Rahman Afridi, said they don't believe in Pakistani judiciary, which he stressed is compromised under the Pakistan military establishment. Accusing the Pakistani army of war crimes and enforced disappearance, Rahman said Pakistan doesn't deserve to be a member of the United Nations as its military is involved in crimes against humanity. He said that PTM will continue its struggle until the release of PTM chief Manzoor Ahmad Pashtin. Manzoor Pashtin was arrested arbitrarily and presented to before the kangaroo courts of Pakistan, which are compromised under the boot of Pakistani military establishment. We don't believe in these courts and we don't believe in the Pakistani system. And we will continue our struggle till the end until Manzoor Pashtin is released. Sri Lanka was hit by a nationwide power outage last weekend, sending residents to grapple with the loss of electricity by working and studying in the dark. Some shopkeepers kept their business going by working under dim candlelight, while people at a tuition centre were seen sitting in a dark classroom. Local media reports suggested that power supply to several areas is being restored in the island nation. <laughs> Sri Lanka largely depends on hydropower for power generation, while coal and oil are used to cover the balance. During the dry season, the country compelled to use more thermal power for the generation of electricity. Scores of Hindu devotees in Nepal observed the Bala Chaturdashi festival and offered lamps in remembrance of their deceased family members. The festival is believed to provide salvation to the departed souls. Take a look. Hindu devotees in Nepal camped up near the Pashupati Nath temple on Sunday as they stayed awake throughout the night, lighting oil-fed lamps and praying for the salvation of departed soul on Bala Chaturdashi festival. Observed on the 13th day of Vanning Moon of Mangasir, devotees maintain strict fasting as they chant hymns and prayers to Lord Shiva all night long. The ritual ends the next morning as they float live lamps in rivers and start their journey around the Pashupatinath temple premises, spreading seven kinds of cranes along the way. <laughs> दम मरे का पित्री अरु को लागे थी आत्मा दिग्बं दिबंगत आत्मा चीर शांति को लागे चाहिए पित्री अरु जी शोर का बार शोर जन मिनु मरु न परोश मने रे उड़ा अमरो हिंदू धर्म अनुसार अस्ता सरलनो इफ मिथ्स आर टू बी बिलीव्ड अ ट्रेडर बालानंदा हु विजिटेड पशुपति बिकेम डेमन लाइक एंड ही वाज किल्ड बाय हिस फ्रेंड Filled with remorse, he prayed to Lord Pashupatinath, who guided him to perform the holy ritual, which was later named as Bala Chaturdashi. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you the same time tomorrow. Good night.